help me? Please. I'll help you. You come along with me. If, if you please, I, I'm lost. I can... You just come along with me. <coughs> Sit down. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Brown. Good old Mrs. Brown. Don't you vex me and I won't hurt you. Susan will be looking for me. I'll help you find Susan. She ain't far off, dearie. Oh, please, may we go now? No, we mayn't. Take it off. You take it off, you little mule, or I'll kill you. I can have you killed any time, even if it was in your own bed at home. And the dress. And them shoes. You hear me? Take them off, you little mule. Two hours, Paul. Happened to the poor child. Florence will be found, Louisa. Calm yourself. It'll be dark soon. Townsend has organized a party of men to search the area around Stag's Gardens. Where is my son? He's caught, sir. Then see to him. He should not be left unattended at any time, day or night. You treacherous attendant, Richards. How could you have done such a thing? There ain't nothing here for you. I don't want anything, thank you, except to know the way to Dombey and Sons. What's your name? Florence Dombey. Joe, where's that young spark who's been watching a shipment of them goods? You're out, Mr. Clark. You're Dombey's jockey, aren't you? If you please, I'm Florence Dombey and I'm lost. Some boys chased me and a nasty old woman took my clothes and I don't know what to do. Never saw such a start on this wolf before. Don't cry, Miss Dombey. You're safe now. What are you going to do with a lad? All the offices is shut up. Mr Dombey went home long ago. I suppose I could take you to my uncle's, where I live. Is it far to go? It's very close. Thank you, Mr Thank you. What's your name? Walter. Walter Gay. Did you ever hear Mr. Dombey speak of me, Miss Florence? I don't often hear Pa speak. Uncle Saul. Uncle Saul. Oh, bless my soul, what have we here? It's Mr. Dombey's daughter, Uncle. Lost in the streets and robbed of her clothes by an old witch. Oh, dear, dear. Ah. Oh, poor little angel. I brought her here to rest and get warm. Yeah. Come in by the fire. There. <laughs> Sit you down. Put your feet on the fender to dry, Miss Florence. I'll cut us some meat. All right, I'll take care of the pretty dear. You go at once to Mr. Dombey's house. Here, take this. Hire a hack horse from the stand. Thank you, Walter. Well, go on. I'm off. That's a good lad. I see Uncle Saul. Yes? How does she look now? 
quite happy. That's famous. Now I'm off. I, I say Uncle Sol. Again? How does she look now? Pretty near as she did before. Pretty indeed. I never saw such a pretty face. Now I am off. Say it's all right, sir. Miss Dombey's safe at my uncle's. Oh, heaven be praised. Paul! Paul! She's found! I told you, Louisa, the child would be found. Gay. The lad who brought the news, sir. Let the servants know that no further steps are necessary. Yes, sir. This is young Gay from the office. He must be rewarded, Paul. Be so good as to arrange for Miss Florence's nurse to return in the coach with this young man and fetch Florence home. How was my daughter found? I know how she was lost. Why, I believe I found her, sir. At least, not exactly found. Speak plainly and coherently, if you please. Well, sir, she came looking for you at the office. And the office being closed, I took her to rest in my uncle's shop, in Butt Lane, sir, and then came straight round here in a coach. You shall be rewarded in some way tomorrow. You're very kind, sir. I'm sure I wasn't thinking of any reward. You are a child. What you think of or affect to think of is of no consequence. You have done well, sir. Don't undo it. You may wait in the hall. Come here, Richards. Close the door, Gay. The accident that befell Miss Florence today, I regard in one great sense as a fortunate circumstance. But for it, I could never have known of what you are capable of doing. You are discharged, Richards. When the coach returns with Miss Florence, you will leave with it. I shall instruct Tylinson to see that it is paid for to Stag's Gardens. You do not leave this house because of what has happened to Miss Florence. You leave it for taking my son, my son, into haunts and society that are not to be thought of without a shudder. Oh, it's a dumpy, sir. Miss Florence and Master Paul is as dear as me own. I wouldn't have had it out happen. of my sight. Oh, please. Go, woman, go. Goodbye. I shall never forget you, Walter. Never. That's all right. I'll see you to the carriage. Thank you. 
Sit down, Paul. Papa, what's money? Money? Well, it's gold and silver and copper. You know what those are. It's guineas and shillings and halfpence. I don't mean that, Papa. I mean, what is it? What does it do? You'll know that better by and by, my man. Money can do anything. Anything? Almost. Why didn't it save Mama? Money isn't cruel, is it? A good thing can't be cruel. Money can't make me well, can it? But you are well. You're as strong and well as little people usually are, hmm? Florence is older than I am. But I'm not as well and strong as she is. Yes? Excuse me, sir. Time for bed, Paul. I want Florence to come for me. Why don't you come with me, Master Paul? No, I won't. Sometimes I'm so tired and my bones ache. Little people should be tired at night. Well, it's not at night, Papa. It's in the day. Sometimes I lie down and Florence sings to me. And do you sleep at night? At night I dream such curious things. Tell me, Louisa, is there anything the matter with my son? The child is not altogether as stout as I could wish. My dear Paul, with your usual happy discrimination, you have hit the point at once. Our darling is not altogether as stout as we could wish. The fact is, Paul, the child's mind is too much for him. His mind? His soul is a great deal too large for his frame. 
I'm sure to hear the dear child talk, no one would believe. His expressions, Lucretia, upon the subject of funerals. <gasps> funerals again? Who put such things into his head? I was quite shocked to hear him speak this evening about his bones. His bones! I'm afraid some of those people upstairs must suggest improper subjects to the child. His nurse, Susan Nipper, is exceedingly attentive and useful, and not at all presumptuous. I never knew a more biddable young woman. I'd say that for her if I was on trial before a court of justice. Well, you're not on trial now, Louisa. Paul, I must be spoken to kindly or there's an end of the matter. I was merely inquiring about Paul's health. If you have any doubt as to the amount of care and caution and self-sacrifice that has been bestowed upon little Paul, I should wish that you refer the question to any of the dependents in this house. Hello. Send for Tarlinson if you wish. I'm sure he has no prejudice in our favor. I do not question your devotion, Louisa. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So am I. Parker Pep saw Paul this morning, I believe. He did. Miss Tox and myself were present. Dr. Pep said it was nothing to speak of, but he recommended sea air. Sea air? There is nothing to be made uneasy by, Paul. Both George and Frederick were ordered sea air when they were about the same age. About Paul? I think, and so does Miss Tox, that a short absence from this house is to be considered under the guidance of so judicious a person as Mrs. Pipchin, for instance. Who is Mrs. Pipchin, Louisa? Mrs. Pipchin, my dear Paul, is an elderly widow, Miss Tox knows her history, who has for some time devoted all the energies of her mind, with the greatest success, to the study and treatment of infancy. In Brighton? In Brighton. Oh, she has been very well connected, Paul. Her poor husband died of a broken heart in... Where did you say he broke his heart, my dear? I forget the precise circumstances. In pumping water out of the Peruvian mines. Died at the handle, did he? He invested money in the speculation which failed. <laughs> Apparently, Mrs. Pipchin's management of children is quite astonishing. Perhaps I should say of Mrs. Pipchin, dear sir, that many ladies and gentlemen, now grown up to be interesting members of society, have been indebted to her care. The humble individual who addresses you was once under her charge. Why, Lucretia! I believe juvenile nobility itself is no stranger to her establishment. Do I understand, Miss Tox, that this respectable matron keeps an educational establishment in Brighton? It is not a preparatory school, by any means. Should I express my meaning if I designated it uh, an infantine boarding house of a very select description? On an exceedingly particular scale, Paul. Oh, exclusion itself. Supposing I decide to send Paul down to Brighton to this lady, who would go with him? Well, I really don't think you could send the dear child anywhere at the moment, Paul, without Florence. Is there nobody else? He has quite an infatuation for her. Very well. So be it. no use. Anyone can look. Come in and buy it. No. Uncle Sol, I don't think you're well. You haven't eaten any breakfast again. I shall bring a doctor to you if you go on like this. He can't give me what I need. Customers. 
All right, customers. Confound it. And I see people walking up and down the lane in shoals all day. I feel half tempted to rush out, collar someone, bring him in, and make him buy 50 pounds worth of instruments. Don't be out of spirits, Uncle. When orders do come, they'll come in such a crowd, you won't be able to execute them. I shall be past executing them whenever they come. There's nothing more than usual the matter, is there, Uncle? More than usual? No. Be open with me if there is. Well, what should be the matter more than usual? When I see you like this, I'm quite sorry that I live with you. Nobody was ever happier than I am with you, Uncle. But I'm quite sorry that I live with you when I see you worried or unhappy. Well, I am a little dull at such times, I know. What I mean, Uncle, is that sometimes I feel you ought to have a nice little dumpling of a wife sitting here instead of me. <laughs> I can't be such a companion to you when you're low and out of sorts as she would. I just feel sorry you haven't got someone better about you than a blundering rough and tough like me. I've got the will to console you, but not the way. My dear boy, if that nice little dumpling had taken her place in that parlour five and forty years ago, I never could have been more fond of her than I am of you. Well then, will you not tell me what's the matter? There's nothing the matter. Time for me to go. You're a good lad, Wally. If I find out you've been deceiving me, I'll never tell you anything more about Mr. Dombey and the firm. Or Miss Florence? How's the master's daughter? Sometimes she smiles at me across the street. <laughs> I raise my hat to her. <laughs> Go on. You will not be cast down anymore. No. <laughs> what is it saying, Roy? Saying, dear. The sea. It's just the noise of the waves. Keep up, too. But they're saying something. Are they dear? I can't quite make it out. I hope, Mr. Dombey, the arrangements meet with your approval. They are excellent, madam. Hmm. I will, of course, be visiting my son from time to time. Whenever you please, sir. There is no doubt, I fear, that in his studies, Paul is behind many children of his age. What a wealth of honey have we here, sir. Master Dombey is a little bee, about to plunge into a garden of the choicest flowers. There is nothing of chance or doubt in the course before my son, Mrs Pipchin. His way in life was clearly marked out before he existed. The education of such a young gentleman must not be delayed. There is a great deal of nonsense talk these days about young people being pressed too hard at first. It never was thought of in my day, and it has no business to be thought of now. My opinion is... Keep them at it. Rest assured, sir, Master Dombey will be taken in hand. I'm sure. If there is any little misgiving in my own mind, Mrs Pipchin, it is not that. Sir? My daughter. Miss Dombey will be company for my niece, Berinthia, and, of course, there's always a great deal of sewing to be done. Not having known a mother, Paul has concentrated much of his childish affection on his sister. Too much, in my opinion. Hoity toity! Then we shall have to substitute new cares and new impressions, Mr Dombey. 
And if she don't like it, she must be taught to lump it. Mrs. Pipchick? Four o'clock, Paul. Well, Paul, I shall see you again very soon. You're free on Saturdays and Sundays, you know. Yes, Papa. And you'll be a clever man here, won't you? Try to learn a great deal. Now, that's the way to have money. I'll try. You're almost a man already. Almost. Goodbye, my child. Goodbye, Papa. Your aunt will arrange for a suite to be booked in my name at the Bedford Hotel. You will bring Paul to luncheon on Saturday. Yes, Papa. Come, Louisa. Come to the window and wave to Papa. Away, Miss Dombey, do leave the child be. I want to go home, Floyd. This isn't our house. No, sir, it's mine. It's a very nasty one. Hush, dear. There's a worse place in it where we shut up our bad boys. Well, sir. How do you think you shall like me? I don't think I shall like you at all. for Miss Florence's nurse to return in the coach with this young man and fetch Florence home. How was my daughter found? I know how she was lost. Why, I believe I found her, sir. At least, not exactly found Speak plainly and coherently, if you please. Well, sir, she came looking for you at the office. And the office being closed, I took her to rest in my uncle's shop, in Butt Lane, sir, and then came straight round here in a coach. You shall be rewarded in some way tomorrow. You're very kind, sir. I'm sure I wasn't thinking of any reward. You are a child. What you think of or affect to think of is of no consequence. You have done well, sir. Don't undo it. You may wait in the hall. Come here, Richards. Close the door, Gay. The accident that befell Miss Florence today, I regard in one great sense as a fortunate circumstance. But for it, I could never have known of what you are capable of doing. You are discharged, Richards. When the coach returns with Miss Florence, you will leave with it. I shall instruct Tylinson to see that it is paid for to Stag's Gardens. You do not leave this house because of what has happened to Miss Florence. You leave it for taking my son my son into haunts and society that are not to be thought of without a shudder. Oh, Mr. Dombey, sir. 
Miss Florence and Master Paul, he's as dear as me own. I, I wouldn't have had it out happen. Out of my sight. Oh, please. Go, woman, go. Goodbye. I shall never forget you, Walter. Never. That's all right. I'll see you to the carriage. Sit down, Paul. Where is my son? In his cot, sir. Then see to him. He should not be left unattended at any time, day or night. Attendant Richards, how could you have done such a thing? Now clear off before you get her. If you please, is this the city? Clear off, there ain't nothing here for you. I don't want anything, thank you, except to know the way to Dombey and Sons. What's your name? Florence Dombey. Joe? Where's that young spark who's been watching a shipment of them goods? You're out, Mr. Clark. You're Dombey's jockey, aren't you? If you please, I'm Florence Dombey and I'm lost. Some boys chased me and a nasty old woman took my clothes and I don't know what to do. Never saw such a start on this wolf before. Don't cry, Miss Dombey. You're safe now. What you gonna do with a lad? All the offices is shut up. Mr. Dombey went home long ago. 
I suppose I could take you to my uncle's, where I live. Is it far to go? It's very close. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. What's your name? Walter. Walter Gay. Did you ever hear Mr. Dombey speak of me, Miss Florence? I don't often hear Pa speak. Bless my soul, what have we here? It's Mr. Dombey's daughter, Uncle. Lost in the streets and robbed of her clothes by an old witch. Oh, dear, dear. Ah. Oh. Poor little angel. I brought her here to rest and get warm. Yeah. Come in by the fire. There. along with me. If, if you please, I, I'm not stuck. You just come along with me. <coughs> Sit down. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Brown. Good old Mrs. Brown. Don't you vex me and I won't hurt you. Susan will be looking for me. I'll help you find Susan. She ain't far off, dearie. Oh, please, may we go now? No. We mayn't. Take it off. You take it off, you little mule, or I'll kill you. I can have you killed any time, even if it was in your own bed at home. Ah! And the dress. And them shoes. You hear me? Take them off, you little mule. Paul. What on earth can have happened to the poor child? Florence will be found, Louisa. Calm yourself. It'll be dark soon. Townsend has organized a party of men to search the area around Stag's Gardens. Sit you down. Put your feet on the fender to dry, Miss Florence. I'll cut us some meat. All right, I'll take care of the pretty dear. You go at once to Mr. Dombey's house. Here, take this. Hire a hack horse from the stand. Thank you, Walter. Well, go on. I'm off. That's a good lad. I say, Uncle Saul. Yes? How does she look now? That's famous. Now I'm off. I, I say, Uncle Sol. Again? How does she look now? What? Pretty near as she did before. Pretty indeed. I never saw such a pretty face. Now I am off.
I beg pardon, sir, but I'm happy to say it's all right, sir. Miss Dombey's safe at my uncle's. Oh, heaven be praised. Paul! Paul! She's found! I told you, Louisa, the child would be found. Gay. The lad who brought the news, sir. Let the servants know that no further steps are necessary. Yes, sir. This is young Gay from the office. He must be rewarded, Paul. Be so good as to arrange.